Hello students and welcome back to Lore of the Iron Kingdoms with me, Professor Castor. And before we begin, I just wanted to let all the new students know that this is lore about a tabletop war game slash RPG game of War Machine and the Iron Kingdoms, respectively. But today we are going to continue going over the elemental troll blood war beasts. As we went over many of them last time, we'll be finishing them up today, and then the following week we'll be going over all the character war beasts, or the <laughs> war beasts that have a little bit more style points than the rest of them. And before we begin, another question for you guys. What resistance would you say is the most impactful for your game? Is it like blast resistance, fire resistance, ice resistance, uh, corrosion resistance? Any of those? Any of the above? Um, yeah, let us know, because uh, being able to resist certain chemicals or other is just as important as being able to dish them out. So let us know. We would love to hear it. Also, uh, thank you guys so much for showing up to class. And if you could, please hit that like button and subscribe. And please share this and let your friends and fellow gamers know about this YouTube channel. It does help keep this steam train rolling. helps everybody get their little updates on the lore every day and uh thank you private your press again for letting us read your fantastic lore on the channel and without further ado let's begin storm troll unlike the many varieties of trolls that prefer to blend in with their environments a storm troll primed with galvanic energy and ready to attack is a blazing beacon of power intimidating well beyond its size Deadly lightning erupts from the array of natural conductors that runs along the length of its spine, playing along its sides before bolting from its mouth at anything that arouses the troll's ire. Beneath its pounding fists, mighty warjacks shudder and stall with disrupted cortexes. Storm trolls are thought to have originated in the punishing stormlands of the Bloodstone Desert, a freakish region filled with a constant electrical storm. The only beast capable of enduring this environment are those specifically adapted to it. Despite their ability to endure here, storm trolls have long felt compelled to roam west into other regions, especially in pursuit of food. They have settled in a number amid the peaks of the Wormwall Mountains, making use of their special abilities to drive away competing predators. They emerge amid raging lightning storms to howl at the sky and call down the thunder. Some brave Trollkin warlocks have dared those peaks to secure these creatures and enlist them in the defense of the Creels. And yes, a walking storm cloud would be a great description of a storm troll. And with their ability to stall out cortexes of warjacks, uh, this is a great way to shut down robots as well. Um, but it will basically shut down anybody. I don't know if you've ever been electrocuted or seen men get electrocuted, but once you get zapped by that, you're you know going to take a bit to stand back up if you survive at all. Um, not only is this guy a walking storm cloud, he also has fists that do a pretty significant amount of damage to the regular unit. He may not do a crazy amount of damage to a heavily armed warjack, but him being able to clock it once, stall it out, and then have, say, a bigger dire troll come in and clean up the rest is a stat, uh, is a tactic I have seen a many a time. Um, but let's read over his Mark 3, 2, Mark 4 changes and see what we got. And as always, let's start with this stat line. He is still a speed 5. He has been upgraded to a mat of 6. So his mat was originally 5, now it is 6. His rat is 6. Defense 12, arm 16, fury 3, and threshold of 9. Uh, he has the ability to trample. He has a resistance to electricity, which makes sense. And he has the headbutt power attack as well. And he has a dual attack because they're handing that out pretty regularly in Mark IV. Uh, which is pretty fantastic for a guy that has both melee and ranged weapons that are very useful in melee combat. Uh, his abilities, of course, include regeneration. So he can be forced to remove D3 damage points from himself once per his activation, which is pretty standard for trolls. And then he has a repulsor field. When this model is hit by a melee attack, after the, after the attack is resolved, the attacking model is pushed one inch directly away, so he magnetically pushes people away, basically. And that is always useful, especially since he's not the heaviest armed dude, and if it's a close range warjack or war beast running into him, or a unit, him being able to push him outside of the melee so he doesn't get hit again, very useful to have. Uh, his weapons include his lightning that he shoots out of his mouth, 
It does have the ability to shoot while he's in melee. Uh, and it is electrical damage. Makes sense. Uh, and it has a special ability, Lightning Generator. When a model is directly hit with a basic attack made by this weapon, Lightning Arcs from that model hit to the D3 consecutive additional models. Uh, the Lightning Arcs to the nearest model it has not already arced to within three inches of the last model it has arced to, ignoring this model. Each model the Lightning Arcs to suffers a Power 10 electrical damage roll. Lightning arc damage rolls are not considered when caused by an attack, so anything that you know pops off from an attack doesn't uh, doesn't come from an attack. Uh, resolve lightning arc damage rolls simultaneously with the damage from the attack that caused the leap. So everything happens simultaneously. So something that kicks off if someone dies doesn't happen because everybody dies at the same time, and it's not considered to be from an attack, which saves you there. So it's basically hopping from one guy to the next guy, pretty pretty quickly. Now, that is basically the exact same he was in Mark III, so it's not really that different at all. Uh, but his claws have changed up, so his claws are a Mat 6, range 1. Oh, going back to Lightning, it is a range 10, so he actually, it's a range 10, power 12, so it's actually a pretty decent distance, so it makes him a pretty decent range guy as well, so. And really good at taking out low armor models. But, back to the claws. I, it is a Mat 6, range 1, POW 12. It is has the the open hand capability, so he can throw things as well. And then he has a critical disruption on his fists now. So on a critical hit, he disrupts a Warjack, so they can't be given focus. And yeah, basically they can't get, be given focus. Any focus they have on him is disrupted. And I believe they, they become stationary for one round. But... I'm not entirely sure about that second part. I think that was probably, I'm thinking Mark 1, Mark 2, maybe. I don't know, I've been doing this a while. But uh, that is different from his original claws, his original in Mark 3. Uh, it was a, it is a 12 melee attack uh, that caused Cortex damage. When a Warjack is hit with this weapon, it suffers one damage point to its first available Cortex system. So, this guy, if you get him into a into a fight with a Warjack, most Warjacks only have three Cortex boxes to begin with. So this guy just needs to make his two initial attacks because it's auto one damage point to the Cortex and then you can force him to have one more and if, <laughs> if the, your team that you, or if the team that you, he's fighting does not have a mechanic on staff, you just close down the entire use of a Warjack's Cortex basically making him not nearly as efficient on the field of battle which is great but I imagine for a you know not trying to break stuff that's uh that would be a little too much for such a light low cost storm troll um, but his animus includes lightning fists and it looks like it's basically the same but we're gonna read over it in its entirety uh, lightning fist is a cost one a self so him or his war lock can use it the spellcaster gains resistance to electricity and its melee weapons gain Electro Leap. Uh, lightning Fist lasts for one round. When a model is directly hit with a basic attack made by a weapon with Electro Leap, you can have the Lightning Arc to the nearest model within three inches of the model hit, ignoring the attacking model. The model the Lightning Arc, the model the Lightning Arcs to suffers an boostable Power 10 electrical damage roll, and then Lightning Arc rolls are not considered to have been caused by an attack, and they're all simultaneous. So this is basically a, a run-on with his, with his normal lightning ability. Uh, but this one doesn't hit the, this one doesn't hit, you know, D3 of the nearest, or D3 models. This one just hits one model within three inches, so. So that's still good if you're, you know, have him charge into a unit of low armored guys. He can hit one and then the lightning arcs the next one and clocks him, or if your or, warlock jumps in, he can do the same thing, so. Yeah, now that, that's a very useful ability as well. It makes his damage output kind of staggering for low armored models. So, and him being able to shoot one of those out 10 inches and then, you know, him being able to jump his basically an extra melee attack out to, you know, the model within three inches is kind of great. But that is the Storm Troll. Very dangerous. Great if you're going up against somebody who uses a lot of electrical attacks because he's immune. Although, if they use a lot of electrical attacks, they're probably also immune too, so it's kind of a null point. 
But yeah, there you go. Let's move on. Swamp Troll. Trolls are among the most adaptable creatures on the face of Cain. From the harshest desert to the most frigid mountain, no environment is too inhospitable, not even the most forbidding marsh. Lurking beneath the surface of the murky waters, swamp trolls are dangerous creatures able to swallow a man whole to fill their ravenous gullets. Unlike most other trolls, swamp trolls are amphibious and can remain beneath the water seemingly indefinitely, lying in wait. They will often adopt their posture near riverbanks or the shores of lakes where the hapless victims are abundant. Their huge sticky tongues can strike from a shocking distance with surprising accuracy, dragging prey to an awful doom within their fetid bellies. Like their brethren, swamp trolls are accommodating eaters, as happy to consume unwary humans as they are to gorge themselves on fish or insects. Swamp trolls often accompany those creels that live near the Blood Smeeds Marsh, the Fen Marsh, and other wetlands. Until recently, they are rarely seen far from their dank homes, but now they regularly venture far afield in the service of the Troll Blood Warlocks, who values the creature for their startling and unnerving capabilities. And yes, I feel like anything that shoots its tongue out and drags a fully grown man into its mouth to swallow whole is kind of terrifying and I don't recommend anybody see that and anybody that ever lived near the marsh or the swamplands uh, they probably were told uh, lots of stories about hey be wary when you're near the uh, near the waters fishing or whatever you're doing because these things can pop up pretty much anywhere and I've also seen these particular guys run around with certain types of other swamp faring civilizations like the Gatorman factions um, I'm not sure how, but I believe one of their more frog-like warlocks ended up being able to befriend these guys, uh, weirdly enough, but uh, anybody else that can get trolls is kind of terrifying outside of the troll bloods themselves being a terrifying force to go up against. But let's read over his Mark 3 to Mark 4 changes, and I'm pretty sure there are at least a few most likely to just kind of balance them out because this guy's tongue attack is pretty devastating to begin with but let's look him over and as always let's start with the stat line he has his trample he has pathfinder because he's used to running around the swamps he has headbutt he has dual attack and he has amphibious uh, so while he is in water uh, he gains concealment and you can shoot through him as if he's not there because he sinks in uh, his abilities oh and he has dual attack not sure if i mentioned that probably just did his abilities he has regeneration because he's a troll so he can be forced to remove a d3 damage points from himself once per activation. And then he has snacking, so he can eat guys after he kills them. And he gets to remove a d3 damage points from himself. So the more guys you can get him to eat, the more he can heal himself up. And he's not a super expensive swamp trolls, because these guys are a dime a dozen. So Alrighty, one of the moves they remove from him is dual attack, because it's now a more standardized ability. Um... He no longer has impervious flesh, so when he suffers damage roll, he does not, uh, he cannot remove one of the damage die from him because he's he's not nearly as hardy as he used to be. Um, and then he still has regeneration, still has snacking. So, outside of the impervious flesh, that's the only thing that's been removed from him so far. Well, let's check out his his weapons because that's where the crazy stuff comes in. But first, let's read his stat line because I completely shot right past that. He is a speed 5, he is a mat 5, he is a rat 6, he is a defense 12, arm 16, so I guess because of the removal of the, the tough skin ability or his impervious flesh, they increase his armor 2 more points from 14, so he's a little bit hardier. Uh, he has a fury of 3 and a threshold of 9, so yeah, he's got better armor, that's good, that's, that's a major change. Alright, back to his weapon. His Tongue Lash has Critical Consume and Drag. It is a Rat 6, range 8, rate of fire 1, and a POW 10, and he can shoot it into melee. Uh, criticals Consume. On a critical hit, if the attack hits a small based non-leader model, that model is removed from play. So there's no body, no soul, he eats this thing whole, no questions asked. Terrifying. Then he has drag on this weapon, so if he doesn't automatically eat his his attacked model, it is dragged over to him just in case. Um, so if this model hits an enemy model with an equal to or smaller base size, 
than itself. The basic attack with this weapon, immediately after the attack is resolved, the model hit can be pushed directly towards this model until it is contacted, until it contacts a model, an obstacle, or an obstruction. So if there's nothing in the way, he'll pull it right up to himself, and then he'll probably continue to take some wax at it with his claws. So yeah, if he doesn't automatically eat it, he'll pull it over to himself so he can get the better chance to do that himself. Uh, his claws are basic, uh, mat 5, range 1, pal 12s, and they're fist weapons so he can throw people. Um, not the most impressive melee weapons as far as war beasts go, but I feel like a lot of people that take this guy usually take him for his tongue lash so you can move people around the field of battle pretty easily if not eat them outright. His next animus is Swarm, which is a very useful animus to anybody that uses it. The spellcaster gains concealment, and then living enemy models suffer at minus two to their attack rolls while within two inches of the spellcaster. So this is just a good defense buff all around. Um, and at this guy's total cost of seven points to get him in, he's not a super expensive uh, war beast to pull into a group. And you know, giving swarm on a stick, being able to you know have him go up, go up against living models, and if he's next to his own dudes, then he gives them an additional you know. Give additional plus two defense basically while he's within two of them and then him himself gets swarmed so gets his defense up to a grand 14 which is still pretty impressive for a war beast so but yeah this guy is this guy is disturbing being eaten alive is a thing that you never want to happen but going up against trolls uh they usually eat dead things mostly if they're dead well we'll find out but let's move on winter troll the angry battle cry of the Winter Troll has frozen the veins of northern Kadorans, the Nis, and even the hardy dwarves of Roll. Emerging from the blinding white sheets of the raging blizzard, their bloodshot eyes fierce and merciless, Winter Trolls descend upon villages, tear apart houses, and expose the inhabitants. One great exhalation of their freezing breath covers their victims in a crippling rhyme before the Trolls descends to feast on their prey. The hardy trollkins of the northern Scarfell forest occasionally befriend these savages and turn them into powerful allies to defend their territories. Trollkin warlocks have goaded the winter trolls from remote lairs, encouraging them to follow into warmer climes and join in the battle. These fierce creatures demonstrate the characteristic adaptability of trolls. Instead of the quills common to the trolls of warmer latitudes, winter trolls have a thick fur that insulates them from even the most bitter winds and allows them to happily endure the cold that would slay most living things. Each harnesses the raw power of the ice and snow, able to breathe out tremendous gouts of frozen air that rips through foes and chokes breaths from lungs. If empowered by warlocks, even the mere proximity of their frosty forms exposes the unwary to cold so extreme it can paralyze muscles and leave the attackers easy prey for the troll's claws. And this guy is slightly different from the ice trolls that throw frozen, you know, spears of ice uh, because this guy is a little bit more of a melee combatant. And being able to spray ice out of his mouth makes him very different from the ice chucking trolls. So, yeah, he is a, a terrifying creature to behold. And any any guy that just freezes you being around him as cold is like, say, Sorska version 3 or version 2 version 3, it's version 3, is a terrifying, uh, terrifying prospect for anybody trying to run up on these guys. And the Trollkin of the, the Northkin variety use ice exceptionally well because, well, that's their whole region. So let's read over their Mark 3 to Mark 4 changes and see what we got. And as always, we will start with their stat line. He is still a speed 5. He is a mat 5. He is a rat 6. So it's Rat actually went up, so he's a little bit better at his his uh, range attacks. His defense is 12, his armor is 16, a fury rate is 3, and threshold is 9. He has the slam and headbutt capabilities, as most small troll can do. Uh, he has immunity to ice, he has pathfinder, and he has dual attack, which makes sense for a guy that uses a melee attack. His special abilities are also regeneration D3, because he is a troll can. Uh, he can be forced to remove D3 damage points from himself per activation. And he has, let's move over to his weapons now. He has Ice Breath. So Ice, ice Breath is a, now a Rat 6, a Spray 8. 
rate of fire one and pow 12. It is, he can use it in melee because I think most spray weapons you can use in melee now because that makes sense. And then it is a frost damage type. So if you're going up against somebody who has immunity to frost, it does one less damage die. But that is that he has a critical freeze on there. So on a critical hit, a model becomes stationary for one round unless, of course, it has resistance to cold and frost damage. So, yeah, and remember that the spray is now a straight line. Um, targeting whatever model is going over people's bases. It's no longer a spread like it was in Mark III, but that is just a nice upgrade. But the fun upgrade on that is because it no longer uses a template, you can expand it if you have something like Snipe. So you can actually increase his spray from a eight to an 11. But then on the opposite end, if somebody has a ability that reduces the range of a, of a weapon, it also reduces these as well, unfortunately. So but that makes him a super dangerous regardless. And then his claws are a mat 5, range 1, pow 12, fist weapon, so he can throw people as well, or you know, do whatever else they do with the open hands weapon. Probably you know, give people the slappy slaps. And his animus is a winter coat. Uh, cost 1, range self, so him and his warlock can cast it. The spellcaster gains resistance to cold and a freezer. Winter coat lasts for one round. When an enemy model without f resistance to cold ends its activation within two inches of the model freezer, the enemy model becomes stationary for one round, which is phenomenal because if, say, somebody runs up on him or the warlock that is using freezer and they do not kill him in their activation, they're frozen. So he can automatically make his uh, make free attacks onto the stationary model without having to roll any attacks at all because they're frozen and he just automatically hits and automatically does whatever damage. So yeah, having Freezer is a very, very powerful spell. Uh, they just have to survive out the onslaught of the original. Uh, and if they do that, they, uh, they can avoid being frozen. But if they're unable to take out what they're trying to take out, it is frozen. But if you put him in a put him in a unit or another group it's everybody within two inches so he can kind of you know spread out that buff a little bit for if you want to try to defend uh, defend a unit or say a bigger solo or a bigger war beast you know that is a, a great aspect to have as well which basically he is the same guy that he was in mark 3 to mark 4 nothing really has changed at all um, so yeah, there's that. A good old good old beat stick that can hand out freezer to himself and his warlock and can critical freeze people by breathing on them. Makes him a very, a very dangerous. But let's move on. Earthborn Dire Troll. The sign of Dunia's blessing shines clear with the rare and powerful Earthborn. Some shamans believe they were shaped from the very substance of Cain itself. They certainly possess a link to the wilderness and the mother of all kin for their bodies reshape themselves to their advantages as they advance against their prey. Crushing ground litters with boulders, rocks, and rubbles, and earthborn skin hardens like angled stone. As its feet sink into water, its legs achieve bursts of terrifying speed, even more frightening the boast immunities against all manners of elemental weaponry. Some think the awesome power demonstrated by the earthborn springs directly from the regenerative vitality of trolls. In the Earthborn, the power has expanded so that their bodies react instantly to the needs in combat. Whatever the root of this ability, the Earthborn allows Creel warlocks to face and surpass the petty innovations fielded by the cunning machinations of man, scorn, and the dragons. And yes, this guy literally morphs himself around any kind of obstacle that comes in his way, whether that be water, rock, or otherwise. He is a very... A blessed dire troll and having a dire troll who can kind of kind of just morph into whatever whatever he's going up against is kind of just a terrifying aspect and of course dire troll means he is way bigger than the average troll that's why we waited till the end to go over the elemental dire troll and i believe he is the only elemental dire troll so yeah but let's read over his mark three to mark four changes and see what he's got because he has a lot of immunities as they talked about in the archives. Let's read his stat line and see how staggering he actually is. Uh, he has Slam, he has Trample, he has Headbutt, he has Pathfinder because of course 
he is, you know, the Earthborn Dire Troll, so him being able to move over any elements is pretty easy for him. He has immunity to fire, he has immunity to electricity, he has immunity to corrosion, and he has immunity to frost, so going up against anybody that uses those specifically, he is going to turn those down and take less damage from them. His stat line is a speed 5, so he's actually pretty fast for a for a large war beast. He has a mat 7, so he's definitely a melee combatant. He has a defense of 12, an arm 18, a fury 4 because he's a dire troll, and a threshold of 9, making him super, super chunky. The uh, special abilities that he has, he has elemental communion. So while within 2 of shallow water, this model gains plus 2 defense, getting him up to a defense of 14. While within 2 inches of an obstacle or obstruction, this model gains plus 2 armor, getting him up to an arm 20. If this model begins its activation within 2 of rough terrain, it gains plus 2 speed, getting him up to a base speed of 7, which is the exact same thing that he was in Mark III which each one of those things makes him even more terrifying, especially if you're playing in, against him in any kind of heavy, uh, heavy trained environment. He gains a, a bunch of a very useful abilities to keep his living longer while he makes his way to destroy the enemy. Uh, another one of his abilities he has is regeneration, so this model can be forced to remove D3 damage points once per activation. And then he has snacking as well, so he eats people like most dire trolls do. So if he boxes living model with a melee attack, he can remove that model from play and heal D3 himself. And his claws, his major, his only weapon, is a mat 7 range 1, pow 15. So if you put him with a standard dire troll mauler, who can give him, say, rage, he can get himself up to a 17 and make some pretty dang decent damage. But he is a very, very defensive armor and quick dire trolls so you know do not let him uh, do not let him surprise you in battle because he's already a pathfinder so him getting plus two speed while in rough terrain is scary and him getting plus two defense while in shallow water is almost like giving him concealment like he has amphibious and then giving him an additional a plus two armor when he's with within obstacles or obstructions is just is just awful because 20 arm on a dire troll is just staggering but his animus is Earth's Blessing, so this model, so it costs one, it's a self, so it can be cast on him or his warlock. And the spellcaster cannot be pushed, knocked down, made stationary, moved, or slam, or moved by a slam. So it basically makes them stand firm as if they're stuck to the ground, like a building. But yeah, Dire Trolls, or the Earthborn Dire Troll, is staggering for the abilities that he gets just from the environment around him. He doesn't have to have his warlock boost up any of these outside of you know making him do more damage but yeah his movements taken care of his arms taken care of and his defense definitely taken care of by the obstacles around him that he can use so yeah makes him a way more dangerous dire troll and i believe slightly cheaper than the average dire troll but uh yeah if you want if you need him if you need somebody immune to everything and who can use his environment to make the enemies shiver with uh with fear there you go. You want to have this perfect dire troll. But that looks like that is the end of all the elemental trolls. And next time we discuss the troll bloods, we'll be going over all of their all of their exciting character uh, character war beasts and see what makes them more character like than the rest of them. Uh, but before we leave, again, the question is: What are your favorite immunities for whether it be blast damage, electrical, corrosion, fire, ice? What are your what immunities would you say that you have used the most in your armies that have uh, turned out really well for you? And again, if you're still here, please like, subscribe, comment. Whether you want to talk about the immunities thing or not, just comment. It always helps, and I always enjoy discussing things with you guys. And uh, please share, like, and share these videos with your friends and fellow gamers. That does help to keep this team train rolling, helps us grow our class size. And a big thank you again to Privateer Press for letting us read your fantastic lore. And as always, class dismissed.